This is Dr. Rob Maselak, and I'll be talking about performing a tracheostomy today. This is a young woman who has an unknown neurologic disorder, which has caused her to uh, acquire prolonged intubation, and thus is an indication for tracheostomy. For incision planning, the first steps involve palpating structures that are known. This includes the thyroid notch and the sternal notch. The incision is then placed approximately two centimeters or two finger breaths above the sternal notch in a skin crease. After local infiltration, incision can be made. The incision is made down to the dermis, and then subsequent subcutaneous tissue is dissected using bipolar cautery, unipolar cautery, or gem scissors. The platysma layer is identified and divided using cautery and this tissue is retracted using scents in this case. Subsequently, fascia is divided in the midline using a Jones scissor, and bands are inserted. Intermittent palpation of the airway at this point is very important as it is very easy to get off a midline. Once enough fascia has been cleared away, the strap muscles can be identified. These are undermined, in this case again using Jones scissors, and the bands are placed beneath the strap muscles in an attempt to clear this tissue away. As the strap muscles are retracted and we approach the airway, oftentimes we will encounter a portion of the thyroid gland. In this case, however, we did not. The pretracheal fascia must be divided. To do this, a right angle is utilized to get right on the trachea, and then using a 90 degree turn as visualized here, the fascia can be divided by your system. Once the airway is appropriately visualized, it is important to speak with anesthesia providers to ensure that the FI2 levels are at a safe value to prevent any potential airway fires. Either the anesthesia provider or yourself may deflate the cuff, advance the tube, and then reinflate the cuff in an attempt to prevent inadvertent puncture of the endotracheal tube cuff. The tracheotomy is made between the tracheal rings and extended to an appropriate distance. Blood is suctioned away to allow for appropriate visualization of the airway. At this point, a Bjork flap may be raised to help with tracheostomy tube changes. However, this is based on surgeon preference. After creation of the Bjork flap, it is then sutured to the skin using a chromic stitch. It is important to make sure that you are underneath the cartilaginous tracheal ring in an attempt to place a secure stitch at this point, it is once again important to communicate with the anesthesia team in the room. The endotracheal tube is retracted until the tip is visualized, and then the new tracheostomy tube is inserted atraumatically. The obturator is subsequently removed. Then the inner cannula is placed, and the patient is reconnected to the ventilator. It is important at this point to also reinflate the tracheostomy tube cuff. And tidal CO2 helps confirm that the airway is placed in the trachea. It is important to secure the tracheostomy tube. In this case, we use both suture and a tracheostomy tube tie. It is additionally important that the patient be sent back to the floor with the obturator nearby in case the tracheostomy tube would extrude at some point. Key points to this procedure include communication with the anesthesia providers, adequate exposure of the airway, controlled transition between the endotracheal tube and the tracheostomy tube.